I want to tell you that this is one of my favorite things to do. I enjoy getting to invest in other men, speak to other men, spend time hanging out with other guys. I've had the opportunity to speak at wild game banquets and men's devotional times, things of that nature, and it's just a joy to hang out with other men to focus on what God has called us to do uh, as we pursue this journey of faith, as we seek to be the godly husbands our wives desire, we seek to be the fathers that our children need. And so tonight, I hope that we'll have a good time, but have a pointed time as well. My name is Jordan White. I'm the adults pastor here. For those of you I hadn't had a chance to meet, I hope I get to meet with you and hang out with you a little bit tonight. Uh, my family is not here yet. They're still waiting to finish up the school year. But as we get started tonight, I wanted to kind of tell you a few jokes. It'll be a little lighthearted as we, we get started. I hope you don't get mad at me, throw anything at me. Uh, these are more in line with hunting, but it's kind of hard to find some farming jokes. I mean, unless we just make fun of Chad all night long. I mean, you know, we, we could do that with that shirt and that nasty stash he had. But I mean, you know, that's a joke all in itself, I guess. But bear with me because... I'm a Mississippi State guy, and that means I'm a Mississippi State Bulldog, and that doesn't mean that I'm a, a Georgia fan, but that, that ties in real close, so I may pick on you Georgia Tech folks a little bit tonight as we get started, so I mean, some of you will appreciate that. But there were, there were two Georgia Tech guys who decided that they would go hunt one afternoon, and they went into the woods, and they spent their day, and they hunted together, and they had a good time of fellowship. Wasn't very productive, but they had a good time. And as they started to make their way out of the woods, they got lost, and they didn't know how to find their way out. So one of them turned to the other, and he said, hey, you know what? When, when we walked into the woods today, I remembered that there was a sign that said, if you get lost, fire three shots in the air, wait 30 minutes, and somebody will come find you and lead you out. So the buddy shot three times, and they waited 30 minutes, and nothing happened. So he said, well, I'll shoot three more times, and maybe somebody will come and find us. So he shoots three more times, and they waited another 30 minutes, and his buddy looks at him, and he says, man, it's getting dark, it's getting late, we might as well find our way out of here and get home. His buddy looked at him and said, yeah, we might as well, I'm about out of errors anyway. Ha, ha, ha. Tough crowd out there, tough crowd. Come on, be Christian about it. You don't have to get, get upset. But did you hear the one of, uh, about, <laughs> did you hear about what happened to the man at Cabela's the other day? When he got ready to pay for his purchase of gunpowder and bullets, the cashier said to him, strip down facing me. Making a mental note to complain to the NRA about the gun registry people running amok he did just as she instructed. When the hysterical shrieking and alarms finally subsided, he found out that she was referring to his credit card. Needless to say, he has been asked to shop elsewhere in the future. <laughs> I would dare say that most of you are passionate about something. Maybe you're passionate about hunting. You're passionate about fishing or turning over a piece of land or working or doing whatever you like to do in your extracurricular activity. But I wanna ask you, are you as passionate about those things as you are about being the godly husband and father that God has called you and me to be? Are you the spiritual head of your home and the primary disciple of your children, maybe even your grandchildren? if you have kids that are not stepping up and leading like they should. I wanna help you answer tonight this question. What does it mean to be a kingdom man? What does it mean to be a kingdom man? Not just a man, not just to understand manhood, but what does it mean to be a kingdom-minded, a kingdom-focused man? You see, I believe men in our culture are greatly misled and confused about what it means to be a real man, a godly man, a kingdom man. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, be watchful, 
stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. You see, to stand fast in the faith means to have mature stability. Paul had already warned them to stand and to be mature because they had been acting like immature children who needed to grow up. No wonder Paul added here, quit you like men, which means act like men, not like children. The word quit here is short for acquit, which means to perform or act. It was a call to courageous manliness at an hour when mature leadership was desperately needed. You see, our current situation in most of our churches today is not that much different from the state of Corinth, the church that Paul was writing to here. Which leads me to ask you tonight and to emphasize yet again, where are the real men? Where are the kingdom men in our culture and in our society and in our churches? You see, kingdom men who love who have a love for God and who have a love for one another and they stress accountability and they're engaged in accountable relationships with other men and they desire to mold and shape men into the men of God that he wants us to be. Men who have earned the right to be heard and to speak into others' lives and to say, hey, I love you and I respect you, but you are being a knucklehead right now. You made a dumb decision. You are being a jerk to your wife and to your kids. Stop it. Where are those men? Where are those men who have earned the right to be heard to speak into another man's life because they understand a biblical concept of accountability and they know without those accountable relationships with other men, they're not going to be the men of God that he wants us to be. Hello? Where are the men who love their sons and who tell them that they love them and they invest in their sons from a kingdom perspective, not just teaching them how to hunt or how to fish or how to play ball, but while doing those things, teach them and and help mold them and shape them into those men of God, those future husbands, those future dads that the Lord wants them to be. I got the chance to see my son play ball here last week when I went home for a few days. And the first thing that he said after they won their game was, Daddy, we won. And I said, Son, I'm, I'm glad you had a great time hanging out and playing with your friends, but I want you to understand, you need to be a good teammate. You need to respect your opponent. You need to play with good sportsmanship and you need to have the attitude of Christ so you can invest in your teammates. And we got a chance to talk about that. And as many of you have heard when I preached here a little bit ago, I I got the chance to play sports and I love the competition and I, I think it helps to direct us in our walk with the Lord and and how to live our lives, but we make too much about that at times and we don't make enough about what is important and that is how we can use those opportunities to invest in the lives of other people and we've got to do that from a young age with our children. You see, it saddens me that two of my buddies back in Mississippi, and and folks, these, these are godly men. These are Both these guys are a man's man. One of them is a fireman. I mean, he goes into burning buildings. He pulls people out of cars that are on fire. He does a lot of stuff that we would look at and say, that's a man's man. He's a guy that I hunt with. I got another buddy who's a pastor friend of mine who is a missionary who goes into some pretty rough places and developing countries and ministers to people in places that a lot of folks just wouldn't go. But my hunting buddy told me, when I asked him, hey, Keith, are you involved in an accountable relationship since I left? And he said, no, man, I'm I'm having a tough time. I'm struggling. I said, why is that? He said, because nobody's gonna hold me accountable like you will. And then my pastor, minister, missionary buddy, hey, man, how's things going? He said, man, I miss you. I miss our conversations, I miss us hanging out, I miss us having a cup of coffee together because the type of friendship that we have is not that common among men. And guys, I'll just tell you, that that saddens me. It saddens me that we as men throw up these walls and have embraced a 
manliness according to our culture and not a manliness according to scripture. When it's okay to build relationships with other men and to invest in other men, but our culture has so watered that down that we're so afraid that we will be perceived in a negative light that will take away from our manhood that it robs us of the true joy and investment that we can have in another man's life and he can have in ours. And that's got to change. We have got to begin to invest in each other. I love what Dan Merrifield said about Robert Holland at Mr. Holland's funeral, and I asked Dan's permission to use this. He said, our culture today seems to be confused about what it means to be a man. Robert was not confused. He was a tough guy. He was a strong, muscular guy. He was a man who loved the outdoors, yet at the same time, he was compassionate. He loved his wife and he loved his family and he devoted his time with them and invested in them. He was always ready to serve and to sacrifice for others. That's because Robert understood manhood as Jesus modeled it. And men, I'll tell you, if your model for manhood is not Jesus, you're following the wrong model. And if the person that you are following, the person that you are striving to be like, if they are not living a sold out, passionate pursuit of Jesus Christ, stop following them. Quit. If you're following somebody who is putting worldly passions and desires and pursuits and you're seeking to be more like them than the standard of Jesus Christ as revealed in the scriptures, stop it. Surrender your heart and life to Jesus and let him lead you and guide you and ask him to place a godly man in your life who can mentor you. Dr. James Merritt, pastor of Cross Point Church, recently said this. He said, no country in history has ever survived the destruction of the family unit. Why is it that there seems to be so many church-going parents who turn out children who eventually forsake the church and turn their backs on Christianity and it's happening with alarming frequency? One major reason that he gives, there is no genuine passion and real love for the things of God seen in their parents. Dr. Michael Youssef, in his series, Parenting 911, from several years ago, but I think it's still relevant today, he said less than 60% of children who grow up in evangelical churches do not return to those churches as adults because they do not see a real, genuine commitment in the lives of their parents. Our kids are watching us and they're seeing if what we believe is real or not. They're watching the conversations that we have. They're watching how we interact with our wives. They're watching how we interact with their siblings. They're watching how we interact with people that we encounter every single day and they want to see if we're real or genuine or not. And we must live a sold out committed life to Christ. Because the question I present to you and we must continue to think about, are you striving to be a kingdom man? Are you striving in your daily life to be a kingdom man? And I want you to listen to what Dr. Tony Evans says in chapter 12 of his book, A Kingdom Man. He says, if you are a messed up man, you are going to contribute to a messed up family. If you are a messed up family, you are going to contribute to a messed up church. If you are a messed up church, you're going to contribute to a messed up community. If you are a messed up community, you're going to contribute to a messed up state. If you're a messed up state, you're going to contribute to a messed up country. And if you're a messed up country, you're going to contribute to a messed up world. Therefore, the only way, he says, to have a better world made up of better countries, composed of better states, filled with better communities, influenced by better churches, inhabited by better families, is by becoming a better man. Hello? Guys, it starts with you. It starts with me. The path to a better world begins with all of us. You become a better man by aligning yourself under the comprehensive rule of God over every area of your life. 
under God's kingdom agenda. You do it by, th- by choosing not to just be a man, but by being a kingdom man, by being the man that David wrote about that has become Dr. Evans's benchmark passage for manhood in Psalm 128. It is the mantra of a kingdom man. If you brought a Bible, and I hope you did, turn with me to Psalm 128. It's gonna be on the screens, but I challenge you to write this passage down. Go back to this psalm on a regular basis and sit with this and let the Spirit of God speak to you about what it truly means to be a kingdom man. A song of, a, a song of ascents. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be blessed and it shall be well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. You see, your family is your field. To be a kingdom man You must cultivate certain relationships in your life. If you want to see crops produced in your life and the lives you're called called to invest in, then you're gonna have to work at it. Go back to the hunting mindset. When you're putting in food plots and you wanna see the fruit of your labor, you wanna kill that big buck that's gonna come in, it doesn't just happen. You have to go out there and you have to prep the ground. You have to work the ground. You have to get everything right in order to establish that food source in order to see that harvest come about when that deer comes in months down the road. It takes a lot of hard work. You don't just go out there. Some of you might, but not with me, but it takes a lot of hard work to see that harvest of that big buck several months down the road. And we've got to do that. We've got to work at it. So I ask you tonight, what does it mean to be a kingdom man? What is a kingdom man? A kingdom man, to be a kingdom man, you must cultivate certain relationships. And a kingdom man is a man who visibly demonstrates the comprehensive rule of God underneath the lordship of Jesus Christ in every area of his life. Let me say that to you again. A kingdom man is a man who visibly demonstrates the comprehensive rule of God underneath the lordship of Jesus Christ in every area of his life. May 12th is this Sunday. I'm sorry, today is the 12th, isn't it? 15th, today's 15th. I wrote that down wrong in my notes. I knew that was wrong because I was looking at that and I was like, that's not right and that's not my anniversary. May 17th is this Sunday. Thank goodness I sent the flowers today. (laughs) And you're laughing because you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? May 17th is the day I got married. It is coming up and I am away from my wife. But my wife matters to me. And so I sent her some flowers today to the school where she works and she was excited and sent me a text and that type of thing. Our relationship with our wives is important, is it not? What would happen to us in our lives if this became our championship ring? If men in our culture and in our society pursued this and focusing on their marriages versus winning a championship in sports. I'm afraid our culture is headed in the wrong direction. And we need to put more emphasis in our marriages, in our children, instead of our extracurricular pursuits. Men, I want you to know something. You don't have to do life alone. If you are a Christ follower, you have the Holy Spirit. If you're a Christ follower, You have a common bond with other men in the cross of Jesus Christ. And you have other men that should be seeking to invest in you as you invest in them. You don't have to do life alone. You don't have to struggle on this journey by yourself. That's the beauty of a faith family and a church and accountable relationships. 
Accountability is huge. It is key into what we're doing as we pursue a kingdom man mindset and we seek to grow in our walk with Jesus. If we're going to be kingdom men, we need accountability. We will not grow in our walk with the Lord like we could or should unless we're involved in an, another, in a, an accountable relationship with another man. It's not gonna happen. You see, and scripture teaches us we're accountable to God. We're accountable to our spiritual leaders and we're accountable to other believers. And I wanna leave you with this quote tonight. Treat a man as he is and he will remain as he is. Treat a man as he can and should be and he will become as he can and should be. Men, for us to be kingdom men, we're going to have to strive to Christ for Christ likeness. Jesus is going to have to be our model. And then we're going to have to invest in one another. Even though we're different, we have that common bond in Jesus. We're going to have to use that to hold each other accountable and invest in each other so we can be a force for the cause of Christ, so we can be kingdom men united for that cause and advancement of the gospel in our world. God, I thank you so much for these men tonight. God, I, I'm so blessed to be amongst some godly men, to work with some godly men, men who are pursuing a kingdom mindset, who are striving to be kingdom men. That doesn't mean that we're perfect, God, but we're striving to be more like you and we're striving to be the Christian brother that we need to be and we need others to be for us. God, I just wanna pray over these men tonight. If there are men here who don't know you, if there are men here that are struggling with different things, God, if there are men who are here tonight that just need to take a spiritual growth step to grow more intimate in relationship with you so they can be more intimate in relationship with another man and hold him accountable, God, I pray as we go into this time of worship, this time of response, that you will move and you will work in the lives of these men. God, we love you. We thank you in Jesus' name.